Do you love great podcasts? Do you love great Australian podcasts? Of course you do. Australians make incredible podcasts. And if you want to stay up to date with the best Australian shows, then check out Oz Podcasts. Look for us on social media and find your new favorite show from the Australian podcast directory on ozpodcast.com.au. That's O-Z-P-O-D-C-A-S-T-S, ozpodcast.com.au. Check it out. If you like new stuff before anybody else If you like to keep your finger on the pulse If you like the future and want to be in it Keep on listening because we'll start in a minute uh, Tech Webcast The hosts and guests are unsurpassed uh, Tech Webcast Because technology moves so fast Tech webcast ha, Stick around and you're gonna have a blast Yeah Tech 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 webcast ha, ha. Tech 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 webcast Let's go Alright Welcome to episode 296 of the Tech Webcast podcast recorded on the 12th of June, 2014. Tech Webcast is recorded every Saturday at 12 p.m. Australian time. Please rate us on iTunes and like us on Facebook at Tech Webcast. Follow us at Twitter on Tech Web at Tech Webcast. Hello, Jacob. Hello, Brad, and how has your week so far? My week's been fantastic. Mate, just a quick question to you. What month are we in right now? July. June. June. June? No, we're not. We're in <laughs> July. He said we were in June. That's what he said, yeah. That's what, He's a, that's what I was checking. Is he calling from the past? Oh. I'm not sure. And I trust, I trust everything I hear on Tech Webcast. It must be June. I've got another month to work with now. I think you do. I yes. can use it. It says June right on the new show notes. Really? Well, okay, that, that's probably my bad then. Sorry, but I just put the change it. That's what I did. I, problem. I can use I can use another month. Uh, yeah, um, me too. <laughs> so we are in July. So uh, Jacob Jones, how's your week been, mate? All right, and it got me a little guy sitting on my desk. Show it to the camera. This is uh, actually in the video version as well, so people can see it. I'm not sure if Steve can bring that up or not. Yeah, it's, <clears> it's up there now. All right, cool. Uh, talks as well. Really? Okay, that's great. Uh, we got uh, Craig Ship on. Welcome, Craig Ship. Hey, good to be here. Good to have you on, mate. And you're from. Uh, tell us about what what you do. Well, um, I have a network of community websites, what I call local portal websites, and I do a whole lot of things associated with those. Nice one. All right, we'll, just, we'll talk about that very soon. Also, we got, we got Steve back on. Welcome, Steve. Hey, how you doing? Uh, we were away for a week. We're back now. We had I was in, on. Oh yeah, Fourth of July week. thing. Uh, he's like, yeah, I could see you saying to the darn you Americans, Fourth of July, <laughs> ruin another tech webcast. <laughs> no, no, it's all good, mate. No, it's good. It's good to have. A break. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's all good. Good to have a break. And you also, you, you got an, uh, a new Android device. Um, yeah, we got the uh, Nexus uh, Seven right here because I wanted something Android. Uh, you know, I've got iOS, I, so I can actually use it, and you know. Try it out and, and report on it and everything else. Well, you know what Craig Ship's going to say? It's poo poo. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> okay. That's a bag of hurt. There you go. That's <laughs> a bag of hurt. Okay. That's a bag of hurt. Yeah. Um, so, what made you get one, um, Steve? Well, I, I had my, I, I got a new iPhone. And so I had my old iPhone 4S I had for a while. I, I, I didn't turn it in. I'm like, well, let me, uh, I was checking on what, you know, places would actually trade it in for the most money. Um, and GameStop was, I think, offering the most. And I'm like, well, let me. I always wanted to try Android so I can report on it, the different apps and yeah. whatever. So, uh, I've, of all the tablets, I was kind of interested in the Nexus 7 uh, compared, you know, some of the other ones. So I figure, oh, why not? I'll get it, and you know, uh, I'll do uh, future news stories on it or whatever. So that's what I did. Well, I hope you don't go pure Android again, Steve. No. I hope you go to no, that was good. Linux. That was different, but okay, it's close. Um, yeah. yeah, okay. So, how is the Nexus Seven? Do you, do you like it? You, 
Um, I was a little surprised. It was, you know, quite a bit better. Of course, it's got KitKat on it right now. There was some, you know, f expected flubs. Uh, some application. Uh, there's really just one application uh, wasn't responding, uh, so I just deleted that after a while. But uh, okay. I think the developer is just trying to make money off advertising and anything else. But okay, all right. Uh, we got Jody back on after being away for a while. But welcome back, Jody. Hey, it's good to be back. And uh, what have you been up to? Oh my goodness, I have been all up and down the East Coast. Um, as you know, my little puppy Jewel, who is now nine months old, um, has been showing with the American Kennel Club in confirmation. And um, last week, she earned her champion title, so she is now uh, a champion Broad Creek's oh. uh, You Were Meant For Me. We don't know. And um, she also got two majors towards her grand champion. So hopefully we'll, we'll be showing up at Westminster in January or February. Nice one. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Good yeah, it's stuff. Pretty, pretty, I'm, I'm very proud of her, as you can tell. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Uh, no, Andrew, today he's away doing something and uh, he'll be back next week. We're going to announce a giveaway next week, so uh, it's going to be a big, big giveaway next week. Cool. Uh, also, we've got uh, Chris Gray on. Welcome, Chris. Hey, how are you? I'm very well. And yourself? I'm doing great. It's good to be here. Um, I just got back from vacation, so uh, I'm, a little bit, uh, <laughs> I'm a little bit behind on some of the news. I mean, I literally just got back and all I could think about was pod <laughs> podcasting and I was really excited <laughs> to be on the show, too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I love you set up, mate. Very, very nice and... Oh, thank you. It's taken me a long time to put this together and a lot of money. When we first started the studio, I put um, – uh, my grandmother had passed on and she told me to do what I love or whatever. You know, she gave me you know, the word of advice. Yep, yep. So my, my partner and I put some money together and here's the nerd, the nerd tower. Wow. <laughs> Good stuff, mate. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, nerd -gasm. What were you going to say, Jacob? Nerdgasm. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Um, all right, we've got, we've got some news to talk about, so let's go through some news and then uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll talk about the stories. Let's, uh, I'll play this first and then uh, we'll, we'll start the news. <clears throat> Yay, that's my cue to begin, right? <laughs> I'm going to help with the news today. Uh, LG has a very flexible 18-inch display, promises 60-inch rollable TVs. This is a great article by Matt Smith from Engadget. you got to love Engadget. Uh, it's been a while since we've seen any new curved or flexible displays following LG's G Flex and Samsung's Galaxy Round smartphones. LG display is thicker, bigger now. It's announced that it's been able to create an 18-inch OLED panel that has enough give and flexibility to roll into a tube that's a mere 3 centimeters across. The prototype currently has a resolution of 1200 by 810, um, <laughs> while it's a new polyamide film on the back of the panel instead of the typical plastic, which offers the panels uh, substantially more flexibility, and it also, it's also going to be thinner. Alongside the flexible demo, LG also crafted a transparent OLED panel, which has tripled the transmittance of existing see-through LCD displays. That means the picture looks much bigger and less hazy, according to LG Display, SVP, and head of R&D, and buying Kang. He's confident that by 2017, we will successfully develop an ultra-high-def, flexible, and transparent OLED panel for more than 60 inches. Crank up that resolution and bring on the roll-up TVs. The next article here, which is near and dear to my heart, is iTunes 11.3. has been uh, It expands iTunes Extras. As Apple TV finally adds support and Apple plans for iOS 7. This is from Mac Rumors. Uh, Apple Today releases, I oh, this is for uh, two, uh, Thursday, July 10th. Apple Today uh, released uh, iTunes 11.3, including several improvements to iTunes Extras, including new features for high-def movies. This new content will be added automatically to previously purchased iTunes movies for free. And on to you, Jody. And free <laughs> is good. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Um, Sonos owners, I know you've been dying to get more offbeat music. Well, now they have more tracks than Spotify or Google Play Music. Uh, Sonos can now access a SoundCloud beta program. And um, SoundCloud is kind of like an audio version of Vimeo or Flickr. It's a platform for new artists. So, again, if you're looking for um, some offbeat music, something a little bit different, Sonos now has 
SoundCloud. And interestingly, they're um, loading it, something like 12 hours of music to the site every minute. So good stuff there. Um, the other story we have is, um, you know, there's an app that's been going around. And I have to tell you that, Brad, you're not the only one who's tried to yo me. And I, I mean yo in an affectionate way. But um, this app that's called Yo, I, I don't get it. It's it's like the silliest thing ever. And basically, what do you do? But you say Yo to other people. Well, evidently, they have done a fundraiser, and somebody amazingly gave Yo two hundred thousand dollars. Okay, now Yo, it's the kind of thing that techies adore, and intentionally, it's stupid. And um, the fact that it net, netted $1.2 million in venture funding only seems to amplify the number of people who are talking about it, which only makes more people sign up for Yo, which makes more people say Yo to other people. I don't get it. Maybe you do. Um, and I'm sure we'll be talking more about Yo in a little bit. So Yo, back to you, Chris. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. It's Palio String Cheese. Here's another great article from, from Katie Nelson from Mashable. Roku has apparently beat out Apple TVs in U.S. media streaming. Uh, of all the media streaming households in the U.S., 44% of them use Roku as their primary streaming device, according to a new report. A study conducted by the market research firm Parks Association shows Apple TV lags behind at 26%, while Netgear, Sony, Google TV, and uh, WDTV, which I believe is uh, Western Digital, makes up the remaining 30%. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. And finally, the last article tonight is going to be the Sons of Anarchy, uh, Anarchy is recruiting Courtney Love for Pivotal Season 7. I don't really know what to say about this, so I'm going to read some of the, uh, some of the article here because this blows my mind. In, in what marks her dramatic TV acting debut, Love will play Miss Harrison, the straight-shooting preschool teacher of Jack's eldest son, Abel. Look for Love's edu uh, educator to take a special interest in uh, Abel, which will likely spark an interesting reaction from the boy's mother, Wendy. Hmm. Who's on I think first? that's... <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> who's on second? I don't know who's on third. This is crazy. I can't believe she's acting again. But yeah. there you go. And I think it's fantastic to see her in the in, in the show. I love Sons of Anarchy. And that's why I added that story in. So uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Sons of Anarchy, and that's going to be last uh, season of the um of the show. Oh, this no is, this is the final We're season. Loving it. Yes, oh, it? yes, last season. Yes, yes. Oh, see, I, I've never, I haven't seen it yet. I was waiting for it to complete because I'm so stuck on the Game of Thrones and and uh, some other shows that I'm that I'm really bugging out about. I just haven't had time to fit Sons of Anarchy in. It's a good show, mate. I love it. I'm hooked on it. I love it. No, I'm definitely going to check it out. I think it's going to end with them all saying yo. Probably. <laughs> yo. Hey. I love you. Yep. Make my app, make my iPad say it. Okay, hang on a sec. Craig Ship, what's your view on them stories, man? It's all good, mate. You don't have, you don't have a view on them stories at all? <laughs> you know at all? Not, not, not really. I, I, don't, I don't watch any television, so. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, what about you, Jody? What's your view on them stories? No. Um... Courtney Love is, I'm not a fan. Um, if she said yo, I probably wouldn't yo back. <laughs> so, wow. Other than that, um, I don't have Sonos. So I think it's, it, it's cool that they're featuring music for, from new artists. I think that's pretty neat. Yep. Now, would it show that I'm out of touch if I said I didn't know who Courtney Love is? Uh, yes. Yes, yeah, she probably would. Okay. Okay. So I won't say that. But seriously. Google I have no idea. Website. Google her real quick. She's. Um, do, you, do you remember who Kurt Cobain was? Nope. Uh, wow. The band Nirvana. Nope. Um, <laughs> television. Double wow. Triple wow. 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 <laughs> uh, Jacob, what about you? What's your view on those stories? Well, I was going to say something about the LG. Yeah, go ahead, man. <clears throat> well, are we going? Are we going the way of Star Trek with that one? Not sure. Please. Not, sure. Not sure. I hope so. Yeah, because if the TVs are going to get flat, they could just turn those TVs into um, the um, holographic TVs. What What did you say to me yesterday, Jay? You said you, you can carry it around with you or something. You can carry it. Yeah, the, when I was looking at the photo, 
It looks like you can roll it small enough and fit your back pocket. Cool. Cool. Oh, oh. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. If people want to know what the yo sounds like. I got Brad. Do the honors. Oh God. Oh God. This is this is I fail. <laughs> um Is that all it does? Yo. That's it. That's all it does. It says yo. Wow. Okay. You know, that's, that's a it. Philadelphiaism. Wow. Yeah, it's funny we'll I live right that. here outside of Philadelphia. Are you? Where are you? Uh Warminster, Pennsylvania. I'm literally forty minutes outside of Philly. <clears throat> I'm uh, I'm in New Jersey. I'm in Voorhees. Oh, wow, Voorhees. I'm not too far from Voorhees. I work in Bordentown for my day job. I mean, this shows you, if you can see my video, how much of a Philadelphian I am. Rocky. Well, That is the uh, Rocky Balboa statue that sits on top of the art museum on top of the steps. How when you did run you up shrink there. that? That's All amazing. All right, we'll have to catch up because I work, I work uh, not too far from you. So okay, we'll so anyway, let's, let's, move, let's move on. Uh, Steve, what's your view on them stories? Actually, uh, I kind of wanted to... Get uh, other people's view on the uh, LG TV. I, I guess the big thing about it, it's you can curve it or something. Yeah, you can curve it, yeah. I mean, um, it's kind of cool in a way. I, I guess if you had a huge 60-inch uh, screen TV and you happen to sit like really close to it and, and maybe you would want like surround sound except surround vision or something. Yep, yep. But um, I don't know. It's... What does uh, everybody else think about the car? I mean, I, 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 I think, think it's okay, cool. I, but I haven't seen is it like really earth shattering? Or I've seen a curved TV in by Samsung? I think Samsung them that, that look pretty good. Or maybe it could bring yeah. other things. I don't know. Yeah. Have you guys seen the Samsung curved TV yet? I have. Yeah, I have. I've seen them. Seen them. Yeah. Have you seen any weird angle problems? If you're like at a, an extreme angle? No, nah, not at all. No, no, not at all. They look fantastic. Yeah, they're only like, what, 2% of a bend, I think they do? I, and I think LG's uh, flexible panel, I think theirs is even less of a, I think it's maybe 1% or maybe it's 4 and 1. I don't remember off the top of my head. But this is a really cool idea. I mean, mm. as a nerd myself, I mean, I would love to have the, imagine you can, you can take these things and roll them onto columns. You could, you know, throughout the entire city, you could roll them around column. I mean, there's so many different applications you can do with this. But in your house, you really got to worry about the dynamic contrast, and you got to worry about the different color gamut. Otherwise, you're going to start getting some weird colors. And you definitely don't want to have, you know, like right now the TVs, depending on which kind of TV you have, you have the, the backlighting issues, and then you lose a lot of that dynamic range. Uh, depending on, you know, which brand you buy and, you know, what size and, you know, whether it's LED or, or plasma or what have you and whatnot. But this would be a fantastic idea. You could roll up. Imagine this. You could go to a convention. You could roll up a 70-inch, you know, it looks like a, just a 70-inch, uh, you know, poster tube. You unroll it. You put it on two, two sticks. And then, bam, you can put whatever it is you're promoting yeah. or if you're doing a, uh, a lesson or something right behind you. <clears throat> now, w yeah. will they actually roll up that tight, though? I think so. I, I, the, the way that she's got it rolling in the video, it looks pretty small when it gets down to the, to the funnel where she's got it started to roll pretty tight. I mean, judging by what it looks like, maybe like three inches around. Wow, that's pretty good. I think uh, yeah, um, other applications, it, it, work, it actually work better. I, I don't know. you got to think about backlighting and some other issues, not just the screen itself. I mean, will you be able to see it, how far and... Yeah, definitely. Uh, what about the Apple TV story, Chris, with the, uh, with the extra iTunes extra added into the Apple TV? Have you seen that yet? Oh, it's about time. Yeah. It's about time. I mean, I've had I, – I buy – I'm pretty much exclusively Apple. The only time I ever use Windows is for my gaming machine or when I'm doing you know, side work for people or building computers. But uh, it's about time that Apple finally has the extras in here. So now I, I haven't had a chance to go through my collection because I literally just got home from vacation not too long ago. But I'm looking forward to because I have uh, – I must have like 35 or 40 movies now on iTunes. Wow. And I know that there's extras for them. I just, yeah. they never had them before. So yeah. I can't wait to go and check out the Lord of the Rings trilogy that I got. Yeah, definitely. Now, there's some really good extras in, in the movies. There. They're really good. Oh, yeah. I love the Apple TV. It's, I use it every day. Do you? Oh, I do too. Them? And to feed into the next, uh, that one article with the Roku beating out Apple. Yep. I, I don't think Roku should be standing up on the mountain saying, yay, we won. I know it's not them reporting it, but I don't think that they should get too excited. Apple still makes more money than they all do, <laughs> and there's a reason for that. And when Apple finally uh, – you know, Steve Jobs was on record for saying that we nailed it. We nailed it. We have no idea what he nailed because you know, they, they have treated the Apple TV as a hobby uh, you know, up until now. 
But I think that with uh, iOS 8 and Yosemite and, uh, and all that uh, interconnectivity, you're going to see, the, I think, I really believe we're going to see the Apple TV do some really amazing stuff that could potentially blow the competition, maybe not out of the water, but definitely make them try to catch up a little bit. Yeah, they've got to open it up to the apps. I mean, we, we yeah. want our apps on the, on the Apple TV. Or some type of, of, of app store. Yeah, our, but, uh, the, well, well, the same apps that are on our phone and our iPad and all, I, I want them on my TV. Well, we yeah, can do that now, though, if we do yeah, AirPlay. Yeah, definitely AirPlay. I, I use AirPlay. Yeah, I love yeah, it. but I don't AirPlay. have to do that. I, I want it to be built into the, the Apple TV. That's why I haven't bought one yet. I'm waiting for them to come out with this next new super awesome Apple TV, and I'm hoping it has all the apps and it has everything I want. And then I can couple that with a, a 4K TV, and then I'm done. Just think what well, they as far can as do. I know, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Steve. As far as I know, the the new connectivity, I forget the actual terminology for it, and that's a shame because I do an Apple podcast. But what they're saying now is that when you walk into a room, this is all rumor still. I haven't heard, I haven't seen any anything announced from Apple. But if it works according to what I've what I've read, you can walk into a room, like let's say you're watching a movie on your iPad, which I do all the time because I don't want to wake up my family with the super surround sound system I have. So like let's say you walk into the room. You would hit, you know, instead of, you know, doing AirPlay, you could turn on the Apple TV, and it's supposed to be able to pick up right where you were in, oh, yeah. in the movie. Mm. Yeah, I've, I've heard about that too, yeah. That'd be, that'd be cool to have. Yeah, yeah it definitely should ready. do that. Yeah, it, definitely. It, there's no reason why it shouldn't do that. Absolutely. Definitely. Just, All right. What were you going to say, Steve, before we get oh, into the Oh, okay. Getting, uh, I was just... Crack. I was, I was just going to say, uh, just imagine if they uh, open, open it to, to developers... I know uh, the CEO of, of the Steam Gaming said if they open it to developers for like gaming, they could possibly you know outdo uh, uh, you know PC gaming and you know many other platforms just by allowing you know people to uh, put their games on you know to the uh, Apple TV and of course right. you know, that's just limitless what uh, they developers could put on you know Apple TV but you know yeah Gabe Newell Absolutely. said that yeah. Yep, definitely. Okay, uh, we got Craig Shipman. Welcome, Craig Ship, as a guest today. Welcome, mate. Hello, good to be here. And uh, tell us about what you do. You've been, you've been on this show before, and uh, anything new that's come come out lately? Or? Uh, well, not really. I'm doing the same old thing. We've got a network of these local portal websites. Frederick.com is one for Frederick County, Maryland, where I am right now. Mm hmm. And uh, I go out and I cover events. I take photos, shoot videos, and so forth, and put it up on the site to help drive traffic into the site. And then we have a whole right. bunch of businesses that sponsor the site. So I'm I'm just doing the same old thing. Okay, good stuff. And what about your shows? What sort of shows do you do on the on the internet? Uh, I'm helping Audrey still with Hooping Live. Uh, Hooping Live is Monday nights at 9 p.m. And I have a show called Hangout 10 that I do occasionally. I haven't been doing it that often uh, lately. Uh, other than that, let me think. I think that's about all I'm doing right now. I've got some other people that, that I helped get started with shows that are still doing shows. Okay. Good stuff. And what's your view on Google Plus? What do, you, do you like it or hate it? Or? Well, I mean, I, I don't really use it that much anymore. I, I use it, again, I, I help with a couple of the shows that, that people are using Hangouts on Air to, to basically produce shows. So of course, those go up on YouTube. Um, I upload a lot of videos to YouTube, and I, and I get a fair number of views and so forth. I don't get any activity at all on Google+, Plus, even though ostensibly I have 15,000 people that supposedly circled me. I can post the exact same content on Facebook and get a tremendous amount of interaction like just the um, day before yesterday, I, I covered a parade and, right here in, in, in Thurmont, Maryland, and I put up the information on Facebook. I put it on Google+. Uh, nothing happens on Google+, and yet I get literally hundreds of shares, likes, comments, many, many photos tagged with names on Facebook. I mean, it just goes crazy, right? Mm. So, so there's just nobody on Google Plus is the problem. Were you ever it, a fan it, of Google Plus when it came out from day one? Or yeah, I, I I thought it was neat. I really liked the Hangouts, and I I immediately started using them to produce content. I'm really about producing content, original content. That's really what I do. I'm right. I'm not I'm not, as you probably already gathered, I'm not very sociable. 
um, but I just distribute my content. And people say, well, you know, the, the reason you don't get any activity on Google Plus is you don't interact with people. Well, how come I get a ton of activity on Facebook and I do the exact same thing there? Mm -hmm. So I, I think that the problem with Google Plus is in the very beginning, I tried my best to get a lot of people to come over from Facebook. And they did. And they came over and they were doing shows and, and I was introducing them to the platform and so forth. And they just didn't stay. They didn't feel welcome. It was a, an awkward interface, had a bunch of issues, and most of them within weeks just went back to Facebook, and that's where they stayed. And I kept telling the Googlers, you've got to make these people feel comfortable. You've got to welcome them with open arms. You've got to encourage them to continue to use the platform. I mean, you're the underdog here, right? Facebook has everybody, and, and you've got to go above and beyond the call of duty to get them to stay. And, of course, they didn't. They didn't do anything. And so, of course, the people came here, and then they left. Mm. And so what good is a platform, a social network, or whatever you might want to call it, when there's nobody there? Yep, good point, good point. And what's your um, opinion on Android? I know you don't like Android, but uh, <laughs> oh, explain geez. to people why you don't like Android. I think it's quite funny. Well, I mean, it's yeah. kind of funny. I, it I, funny. Did a vid I did a video about the iPhone 5S <laughs> saying it was the best phone ever. And it's gotten like you know three hundred fifty thousand views or something, and a bunch of Android people coming in there saying I'm an idiot and so forth. And of course, I reply to all the comments. Yep. And and it's funny what everybody they 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 take it personal, you know that that I'm saying that the iPhone 5s is better, and that the Android phones are pretty much junk, mm -hmm. and they just get all up in arms about it and. I, I've compared them. I've, every time I go through Costco, I pick up the phones they have there and I take a look at them. And, and, and I've, you know, I have an open mind. I will buy one if I, if I think it's a high-quality piece, right? I, I, I'm into quality. I'm into well-made things. And I just don't want to buy something that feels plasticky and junky and, and you use them and they're laggy and they're, they've got a bunch of bugs. And it's just, to me, the, the iPhone is a more polished experience oh, yeah, and, and again i'm not a hacker i'm not a tweaker I, you know if i were to buy a, a car I, I buy a car that i really like and i take it home and i use it and i drive it i don't jack it up and change the wheels and and put a different you know carburetor on it and 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 you know, hack it whatever i want something just to work out of the box so if you want to tweak things and you want to troubleshoot and all that then android's probably a perfect platform for you but if you want something that just works and is a high quality piece then I think you're better off with the iPhone. And that's what I said. And, of course, people get all bent out of shape about it. Mm. Okay, Jacob, any questions for Craig? Mm. Well, not really, but you should try, should try the Android when it comes out with Android L. What's Android L? It, they're redoing the whole, the whole system, trying to get all the bugs out of it. You're kidding me. Yep, they're rebooting the whole system. Yeah, it's a whole new operating system. Is it going to be written from the ground up? Yeah all, new, yeah, all new design and that sort of stuff. Look to it and that sort of thing, you know? When When is this coming out? Uh, I think it's in uh, summer, I think, Jacob. Fairly summer soon, something? I think. So, yeah, very soon. Yeah. Yeah. See, I think, I think the real problem with Android is, have you, you ever heard the old saying, too many cooks in the kitchen? Mm-hmm. I think when you've got a whole bunch of people, and the same thing with Windows, right? You've got a whole bunch of manufacturers building the gear, building the hardware, and, and then you've got the software, and then you've got people tweaking the software, putting a different skin on it, or whatever you call it, and you've got all these people that think they know the way to do it, right? And, and it just becomes a mess. It's just every which way. And I think that that's a real problem. And now I have heard that Google is kind of reversing themselves on some of these things and that they're going to have some of these things be less open and, and have it less customizable or, or whatever. And I, I think that that would be good. I, I think if they could get a consistent experience across all of these phones and come out with some real stringent guidelines as far as the hardware and all these kinds of things, maybe they could, they could fix, fix it up a little bit. But I think that it's the wild, wild west, and it's kind of a mess. And they come out with a new phone every two weeks. And 
you, know, you can't make cases and accessories and all of this stuff for these things if they're constantly changing. Right? Yeah. That's, what, that's what's neat about an iPhone is it's, it, it usually keeps that same body for two years, right? And so you can get all kinds of accessories, and the, you know, the accessory manufacturers know what the thing is going to be like three months from now, six months from now, eight months from now, right? Mm -hmm. And so they'll spend the money to tool up and, and build things. And then you add to that Apple's ability to buy components in huge volumes. So that gives them great competitive advantages there. That might be why they're going to do the Sapphire. And they've licked that problem is because they put so much money in it and they're going to do it in such high volume that maybe they've, they've solved some of the problems where that's been too expensive to do in the past. So I think there's a lot to be said if Google would just you know, say, hey, this is the way it has to be done and come out with some stringent guidelines and and they they all kind of follow that and, and just just go for quality. But I, I think they're going for the low end is what they're doing and they're going for price point and so I, I think it's it's gonna be pretty much a lost cause would be my guess. Okay. Jody, what's yep. your view on all that? What Craig Ship just said? Well, first of all, Craig, much as I love you, I don't agree with you about Google Plus. Um, only because what I find about Google Plus that I that to me is fascinating, it's a different group of people than you find on Facebook. On Facebook, most of the people that I'm connected to, I'm acquainted with. Um, Google Plus, I use it quite differently, and I've met people that I wouldn't have met any other way. Um, case in point. Brad, I met you through Google Plus mm -hmm. when it first started. Um, if I had stuck on Facebook, never would have met. Exactly. So, um, have you actually I, met Brad in person? No. Okay. Have you met Jody yet, Craig? Or no, I almost did. Okay, you should have met it. Yeah, you should have come out to the dog show. For goodness' sakes, it came close. <laughs> I had no idea they would start that early on a freaking Sunday. For gosh' sakes, wow. but can you cool. believe it? And I know, and I had to be there an hour before that. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Yeah. Yeah. So, but, but, yes. Jody, but Jody, you can meet new people on a lot of platforms if that's your goal is to meet people that you can't meet in person. I mean, there's a whole lot of ways to do that. Under, right? Understandable, understandable. But here's here's the the difference. In in my experience, and again, everybody has their own experience and their own paradigm. But um, the people that I've met on Google Plus, I've met because we have shared interests. It's not a dating site. It's not a business networking site. It's not, you know what I mean? It is social. But what I find interesting, I, I see people who post articles that I might not have found that I find um, of interest. And then you start a conversation and you, you, like, you, know, like you connect with people. Um, you know as well as I do that the power of, of meeting socially through, through the Internet, you feel like you know the person. Like I feel like I know you even though we've not met face-to-face. -face. Um, but, but with Facebook, it's more people that I actually know or I've been acquainted with. So it's different. It's a, and yeah, I, yeah I'm sure. Yeah, it, it, it absolutely depends on what you're using it for. If you're, for your purpose that you just described, I think Google Plus is great. And I think like for photographers that want to net with, network with photographers and all these different verticals, yeah, it's it's great because even if relatively speaking there aren't that many people there, there are still going to be a ton of people in each of those verticals. I mean, you know, even if everybody's not there, right? So, so it it will appear like there are a lot of people, right? If there's mm -hmm. if there are ten thousand active photographers on there and you connect with you know four hundred of them, then it's going to seem like it, there's a ton of photographers on there, right? Even though probably every photographer that you meet in your own neighborhood or in your own town, most of them that you meet won't be on there. There still are a lot of them on there. So, yes, if you're using it the way you're talking about, it's great. But, see, that's not the way I use any of these tools. The whole purpose of these tools for me is for me to distribute my content and have people interact with that content. And that means local, that means people within driving distance of my home, generally speaking. And I have found that there are few of those people that are on or active on Google+. 
and that and that's the problem that I have with it. But for your purpose, absolutely, it's I think it's great. Well, and I also think it's a great platform for um, sharing content. Um, you know, if you're a podcaster and you want to do it as a hangout on air, I love hangouts. I think they're they're totally cool. And honestly, I don't feel that they're duplicated on any other platform. Yeah, but Jody, there's no discovery. I mean, and I'm not going to name names and name shows, but I know people that do shows that put a ton of time into them and that have been doing them for a long time, and nobody watches. And yeah, well, no maybe discovery. it's because of, because of the content or maybe because there's not that much interest. Well, and also because there's no way to discover them. It, for being a search company that Google is, right, when you go and you search, you can't find these things. Can you find and the YouTube videos? Uh, once they're up, yeah, uh, not very easily, and and so th it it just kind of all ends up in a dark hole somewhere, and and nobody even knows about it, and so, and and I know people that have done decent shows that did it for a while, and then just got burned out on it, and weren't getting any action, you know, any 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 love from Google or anything, no no support or anything. And and they just kind of gave up and and left the platform. And I think it's sad because I think when people come here and spend time and effort and put on shows and do things like that and create content, they should be supported. And and when somebody does a search, you know, if a, if a local person for example, searches about Thurmont, Maryland, or searches about the parade in Thurmont, Maryland, or, or whatever, then they should be able to find that content. There, it, it should be surfaced. And, and Facebook does a pretty good job of that. They, they do a pretty good job of connecting people, saying, oh, you know, you know this person, you might also know this person, and, and things like that. And I get friend requests all the time where a friend of a friend that discovered some of my content will come on in and tag some photos or, or whatever. That happens all the time on Facebook. Similar things never, ever happen on Google+. So I just think they've got a long way to go and a lot of issues and a lot of things they've got to fix. And they never even reach out and talk to us about what is wrong. And they never even seem to acknowledge that there is anything wrong. And if they want to keep it the way it is with all these verticals, like I say, photographers meeting photographers and so on, and techies meeting techies, then they've got what they want. And, and if that's what they want, then that's cool. What about uh, the communities on Google Plus, Craig? Which of you on them, the communities? <clears throat> well, uh, same thing. I mean, I'm, I'm involved in a Sony A7R community or whatever you call them on, on Facebook. Mm hmm and it's very active. There's stuff going on all the time there. Yep. And yep. Uh, I'm I'm involved in a couple of communities on Google Plus, and there's one that's an iOS community that's pretty daggone active. Um, and I'm sure there are some that are that are more active, but again, that's not really the way I use the so-called social media. I, I don't. I don't interact in communities like that that often so I'm, I'm not a good one to ask okay and I'm, I'm sure some of those communities are communities are very vibrant I mean like I say they've got tons of photographers on on that are that are very active okay. so jacket what were we gonna say mate N nothing Someone's gonna say something. okay <laughs> Chris what about you mate what's your view on all this well my what I usually tell people usually when people talk to me about social media they ask me you know you know what mediums do you use and I say well I've limited I've I've, I've been pretty constrained I we do have a, a Google Plus page but nobody ever goes there so I never put a lot of effort into it because yeah. I found it at least for me I found it a little bit convoluted and then when I started my YouTube channel I had a whole nother it started complicating that, so I have like three different Total Nerd Takeover accounts on one email, which doesn't make any sense to me. So it's like I only use it because I have to, and some people have circled me, which I, I, don't, really, I don't pay any attention to what it means, so I just kind of say, hey, thank you very much. And I, I like to lean towards Facebook, but what I, what, I, uh, what I usually tell people is be where you can be good. 
So if you feel more comfortable on Facebook, be on Facebook. If you feel more comfortable being on Twitter, be on Twitter. Because at the end of the day, the most important thing is how we content creators and thought leaders communicate with not an audience, but our community. And if you can communicate better on Facebook, be on Facebook. Be everywhere that you can be good and where you can provide great content and, 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 and some type of inspiration. That, that's usually what I tell people. All right. Good, good, uh, good info there, Chris. Steve, what about you, mate? What's your view on this? Well, um, I think Facebook is, is different than Google+. Plus. I mean, Facebook, uh, obviously, friends and family are, are more key. And also, it, it's hard to really connect with somebody when you have to, you know, you put in a friend request. They have to accept it to really... And sometimes they can set their photos to, pri you know, or their everything to private. So there's limited what you can do. Uh, Google Plus is not necessarily that way. You can just go on there. You can follow them, circle them, uh, and see their posts and things like that. So that's a little bit easier to do it. And I, I agree with uh, Craig Ship a little bit on Google Hangouts. It is kind of hard to search for particular Hangouts. Uh, I've tried it before myself. Um, and also, it seems to be too much photo and video centric mm. because usually the way I like to socially interact is what the person has to say first and then the pictures and video secondary. But that's just me. I do see a lot of photos on, on Google Plus. Yeah, I do agree about that. A lot of photos. Um, yeah, they want to they, they want to put it like full screen and then tiny little words after it. Yeah. And, you know, that's yeah, not I how I do it. I like to see what they have to say first about it. And, yep. and, and make that primary, shrink the photos and videos down a little bit, and then if you click on it, you can go full screen and all that. That's fine. But um, So, Steve, are you talking about Hangouts on Air or just normal Hangouts to join? Um, just, just like it could be anywhere from, you know, uh, on the computer or even an app, I guess. It's just kind of hard to find unless they send you a link or something like that. Um, okay. Of course, I haven't done it for quite a while. It might have changed since then. I'm not sure. Um, right. But... Well, back in the beginning, it was so easy. They had those various tools. What was it? Hangout Canopy and different things, yeah. right? Where you could go and you could just kind of cruise through and bounce in and out of, of Hangouts and say hi to people and so on. I mean, it was so easy. And I don't even try anymore now. Maybe there are tools now that you can do it again, but but I, I just kind of gave up on it. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, I don't know. Are there tools that you can use now to do that uh, same sure. kind of thing? No, so sure. Jacob, is there any tools you, uh, do you know of or at all? Or? Do they say no. canopy? Can I, no, but canopy. can I call, catch some catch something with Google? Yeah, go. Yeah, the goof the um, gift fo photos. I'm getting so many in my stream. I uh, I'm wanting a way to shut it off because yeah. sometimes it gives it. You see me, too many like in one one section. Mm. Gives you like mm. a little bit of a headache. I don't even use Hangouts anymore. The audio quality in internet is just really bad. I was in, I was in Hangout yesterday yeah. with Jacob and just the, just yeah. audio is just really bad. And I, I said, no, nah, I'm leaving. Yeah. For podcasting, it's not good for us. Oh, no, definitely not. No, definitely not. Yeah, it's all grainy and stuff like that. Mm. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Uh, anything else, Craig, you want to mention, mate? I'll tell you, there's not, not a lot of love for, for, for Hangouts and Google+, Plus, <laughs> except for from Jody. <laughs> of course, she's, she's probably the one that counts. Um I don't. I don't know. I. I don't know what the what the answer to all this is. But I, I think they're working to improve things as far as the quality of Hangouts and so forth. And mm. hopefully that'll get better. And hopefully the discovery will get better. Uh, it's to me it had so much potential. I was hoping it was going to kill Facebook and everybody was going to come over and we were all going to mm. sing Kumbaya, oh, right? That's what I. That's what I thought was going <laughs> to happen too. But it just. <laughs> It just didn't happen, and I, I I hate Facebook, but my gosh, it works. I mean, that's that. I just get a ton of interaction on my content on on that platform. So see, see, I, I love know. Facebook. I love Facebook because it gives me, like I was saying, you know, be where you can be great. So some people like Google Plus, some people like Facebook. I like Facebook because I feel like I have a more a better connection to my community. You know, they can contact me very awesome. easily. And I even let my audience, when they contact me personally, yeah, go ahead. 
you know, you're a part of my nerd army. You want to you want to contact me personally. You want to be on my personal Facebook page. I'm transparent. You know, going from my Facebook page to my personal Facebook, that easy. Bam. Go, come on over. That's what sure. I say. And sure. I, I like that. With well, I agree with you. I, I agree with you. I mean, that's where I get all the interaction. Yeah. I just don't like there's some things I don't like about them where where they that's like they're your your nanny or something. I mean, if you put in a friend request to somebody, oh, do you really know this person? And so on. I mean, the only time I put a, a friend request in is yes, if I've actually met the person in person and I I took their picture at an event or whatever, and I put it up and I want them to find it right so they can tag it and they can share it and so forth. And nine times out of ten, if I do put in a friend request like that, they'll approve it, right? But I'm sure there's the occasional person that doesn't remember or whatever that says, oh, I don't know this person. And then, of course, Facebook gets all up in arms, right? And that they should be smart enough to check and see, okay, this guy's already got seven of their friends or already his friends. He took their f picture at a freaking event, right? Obviously, maybe he does know this person, right? So there's some things like that that Facebook, I think, gets wrong that are kind of irritating. But in general, like you say, it works and people interact on there and the messaging system works and all those kinds of things. I mean, on Google Plus, when there's a message or a notification, I'll click and I'll go and I'll visit something or whatever. And then you can't go back and see it again and because it disappears, right? On Facebook, you can go back through your messages and the ones that you haven't clicked on are, are bold, right? And then the other ones, you can tell which ones you visit and which ones you haven't. I just think there's some things in the interface that just work much better on Facebook, and, mm -hmm. and I'm just surprised they haven't done a better job of ironing out those kinks. What about the edge kinks stinks, and half the things that you want to see, you can't see, and they decide which of your friends are important and which ones aren't, so you don't get to see stuff that somebody posted that you... Well, the same thing happens on Google Plus, though. I don't see everything in my stream from people that I've circled. Uh, you know, and of course, you can go on, I guess, manually and, and, and mess with the volume or whatever, but that's a pain in the neck. Uh, so I think most of these platforms are doing that now. I've heard that Twitter's even doing it. I think uh, Twitter's taken a downfall ever since they went public. I I would you know if I if I follow somebody I want to see their stuff that's why I did that right mm -hmm. why are all these platforms you know throttling it and governing it <laughs> Can I ask Doesn't you guys a quick question about Facebook I don't, I'm wondering if you guys have had the same issue where you know I'm looking at, when you when you're scrolling down through your feed and you get to that portion where you can swipe swipe to the left I usually do it on my iPhone because I'm always out and about but uh, where it says people you may know. And sometimes there'll be somebody that you may know, like you have 23 mutual friends, but then there's like a handful where it's no one. There are no mutual friends. And it's like, yeah, you might know this person. And it's usually, I feel like sometimes they're spoofed. It's like, you may know this person or this person. I don't know who these people are. And there's well, no degree of separation and, either. And the funny thing about it is if you click and you put in a friend request on one of those people, right? And then those people, like I say, say to tell Facebook, oh, I don't know this person. Facebook will gig you and say, well, you can't do any friend requests for two weeks, yeah. right? They just suggested the friend to you. Yeah. That's silly. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, yeah. Wow. I mean, it's, funny. it's so I don't even put any, any friend requests in anymore. If they don't put in a friend request to me, now if they put one into me, I immediately approve it, right? Um, but what I will do from time to time is I'll message somebody. I'll say, hey, listen, your photos are up and so forth. If you want to tag them and whatever, you can. If you want to put in a friend request so you can tag yourself and some other friends without me approving it, feel free. But I just leave it at that. And and, and then, of course, a lot of them will just go ahead and put a friend request into me, and then that's not, not an issue. But um, Sometimes I like to go and look at those people's streams, their, their, um, their timeline, and make sure that they don't, like if somebody sends me a friend request from my community, I check it out real quick just to make sure that there's nothing iffy because I don't want a lot of bad stuff. You know, I don't want bad things in my community. So I look at it and I like, go, uh, if they have a lot of weird, bad language or we those weird videos that everyone posts all the time, and I don't want all that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're running a community, you've got to be careful. Yeah. Absolutely. Craig Ship, you also, also do a show with Dan McDermott on the Google Plus Week show every week. On there every day, every week. I'm on there from time to time. 
Yeah. Okay. What's that about? Tell people about that if people don't know. Well, he's been doing that show for a long time, Google Plus Week. He talks about Google and, and all the things going on with Google Plus. And uh, God bless him, but he, he keeps at it. Yeah, definitely. Good on him. Yep. Good on him. Uh, Want to hang around for a minute, Craig, and have a chat with Chris? Sure. We got uh, Chris Gray on as well. Welcome, Chris. Yay. Here yeah, I hi. am. How are you, mate? Good. You know, I've been having a great time on the podcast, by the way. I've been looking forward to this ever since you invited me, same. which was like a month ago. Same, same. Same. I've really been looking forward. We were, I think the first time you and I interacted was uh, console advice. I think you were talking about maybe buying a, yes. a console. Yes, but that, that never happened, though. Uh, oh, you never got one? I actually would change my recommendation uh, temporarily anyway. I actually ended up buying a Wii U myself. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I, there were some exclusives. And, uh, well, I mean, I guess I should explain who I am before I go talking about oh, <laughs> all my gaming issues. Uh, I basically, um, I'm partners with uh, uh, Trish Wood. She's my business partner. And we created a podcasting studio, or like I like to call it an empire, for nerds. And I uh, lovingly call my community the Nerd Army. And I have different uh, generals and stuff, uh, people that are very active. And our idea and our goal is to create a studio much like Leo Laporte has, but instead of it being all you know, you know, geek stuff, I want to take it to that next level, that more extreme level of being a nerd. And um, you know, I'm not really happy with the dictionary. Uh, I don't like the definition of of nerd in the dictionary. I think it's terrible. And I actually, uh, I've been toying with rewriting it to somebody that has a, a deeper, you know, a mild to higher intelligence and has a deep passion for anything in their lives. When you take it to that next level, that's what makes you a nerd. And I'm going out there and saying, with all the comic book movies that have come out, with all of the video game, I mean, video game industry is making billions of dollars a year. There's people walking around in t-shirts that I used to get beat up for in school when I was growing up. They're wearing them to the malls, these young kids today. Wow. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, um, even like uh, some more obscure stuff and people wearing like Green Lantern, Wolverine. All these things are mainstream now. This is the perfect time to, to – this is the time to rally the nerds together, join the nerd army and come over to my podcasting studio and listen to the content that I have. Uh, some of it's for entertainment purposes. Some of it um, I'm working to do uh, educational purposes, you know, like nerds teaching people that don't know how to use technology. We're working on a bunch of different podcasts and um, – you know, right now we have five different shows that I, I produce myself, and my sister and my mother produce a, a hockey podcast themselves, and they're a part of the network as well. So, you know, even like some people say, oh, you know, you can't like sports and be a nerd. No, that's not true. You can. Uh, my sister is a sports nerd. Yeah. She knows all kinds of stuff about sports. It, she got the sports gene. I got the, the, the technology gene, so… <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yeah. I love the TV so, stuff and the technology in, in the TVs and that sort of stuff, you know? Oh, oh absolutely. So you, yeah. you, so you just need to be obsessed about something. Yeah, exactly. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's basically right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So can anyone add a podcast to your network at all, Chris, or is that what you want to call it? Is it a network of some sort? Or? Yeah, uh, right now we're not taking – well, it depends. If somebody comes to me and says, I want to do a podcast, and they want to bring me – now, I am going to say I'm very strict on quality, content, Yep. Uh, it, it, content is king, and you have to bring great content. That I, I don't want content that's what you want. I want content what the community wants. Because at the be, at the end of the day, without our nerd army, without the community, we have nothing. We're just a bunch of guys talking in front of microphones. Yep. So the first, our first thing is if you if you did want to do a podcast with Total Nerd Takeover Studios, I want good content. Yep. I want it to be clean. Yep. And I want quality. Yep. You have, and I want personality. Those are very important things. And, and I'm pretty particular. I mean, I, I don't want to say the word Nazi here, but I guess I have to. I am like the soup Nazi when it comes to podcasts. Mm -hmm. If it sounds weird, I'm on top of it. Uh, you know, I've taken a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of my love uh, into this. And I, it has to sound good. Yeah, definitely. What's your view on this podcast so far, Chris? Well, you've, learned, you've listened to a, a couple of episodes, and what's your, what's your take on? I've listened to, I think, six episodes now. Okay, and and I, I thoroughly enjoy it. You've gotten uh, you're on on my top five of podcasts I listen to every single week now. Okay, uh, which is cr you know kind of crazy because I am a little bit nuts when it comes to podcasting, and I feel <laughs> like your show keeps getting better and better. Um, although I do miss the old intro, okay. uh, I do miss the brain hand. I, okay. <laughs> I gotta say, when I heard that the first time, I laughed. I thought that was really clever. 
Okay. I, I do like the new intro too, but I, I'm, uh, I guess because I've listened to so many episodes now that I'm just used to brain hands. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Jennifer actually requested that intro a while back. That's why I, I put it on there for her. So um, <laughs> she also loves it. Now, you know Jennifer Ruggiero? Oh, yeah. Jen's been phenomenal. Um, uh, she had me, uh, I met her through a, f- a fellow podcaster. I'll give him a shout out. His name's Kente from uh, IndieRadio.org. They do a lot of great podcasts as well. And uh, it's a long story. It's like uh, we all became friends either on Twitter or listening to each other's podcasts. Yep. And uh, he, he got me in contact with Jen and she became, she's on in my top five as well. And uh, I was on her podcast and we clicked so well. I said, hey, you know, I would love to have you come onto my shows as a regular. So I brought her on to my flagship show, my Tenure T show, which is just a, you know, we just kind of throw all, that's kind of like my show where I take all different facets of nerds, things that nerds would like to buy, collectibles, comics, and I yep. kind of throw all the different aspects into one show. And she fit in just, just perfectly. So I'm going to actually have, I'm actually thinking about, you know, putting her into another project that I'm working on. I'm always Sweet. scheming on new projects. I don't have the time, <laughs> but I'm always scheming. Definitely. So yeah, definitely. she's been a great friend. Uh, Jody, any question? Any questions for Chris? Sorry, I was muted because I keep coughing. Um, yeah, Chris, you you mentioned your your top five. I'm curious what they are. Uh, right now, it is the um, iPad today. It is uh, 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 getting nerdy with it. Um, tech webcast. Uh, it's security now with Steve Gibson, and it's um, iOS today. Good shows. Yeah, I like all those shows. I try. I, there's some other shows I listen to as well, but I try to prioritize those five. Either because yeah, it's it's a, it's a combination. I know people. Um, I believe in what they're trying to do, and, and I and, you know I I know that it's not easy. You know, we my my partner and I and all the hosts that I have now. We've been doing this for quite some time. We we even had a failed po- well not failed podcast, but we had a our first gaming show, which is the first show I launched, which did terrible, uh, which nearly knocked me completely out of podcasting, and then. One day I woke up and I realized this isn't easy. Nothing that's really, truly worth doing ever really is. Exactly. Yep. And I couldn't imagine my life. Like before I started podcasting, I felt like I had no direction in life. I was moving. I, I worked for a family business, but I had left and done other things. And it wasn't until I got behind a microphone and started to talk to people and felt like I was making connections with people. Like I, it was just it just opened my eyes, and I feel like now I actually have a purpose in life to entertain and educate people, and I cannot see myself ever not, even if my 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 nerd army fails and everyone <laughs> abandons me and the 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 studio explodes in space, that's fine because I'm always going to do some kind of podcast. That's how much I love it. Exactly. Now, Jake, explain to uh, people out there how you got into pod- in, into uh, podcasting. Well. For instance, you, you actually helped me learn how to get better and better and better. Mm-hmm. And for, then I, I started out with crappy equipment, then all of a sudden, after a while, I started to get new equipment, made me better and better and better. You know, a new microphone, a new mixer, they're, they're, they're pretty cheap to buy these days. You know, how much was that mixer you bought? 50 bucks, some? 44. 44, and that microphone, it's a good microphone, how much was that mark? 50. There you go. Came yeah, from you Steve. can podcast. You can podcast for very inexpensive these days. I mean, I I went kind of crazy with all the because <laughs> I'm you know a tech nerd. Yeah, but uh, you can. I, I've actually I've I've done some consulting, not to get paid for. I just did it because it was the right thing to do, and you know I was making friends, and these people reached out to me and said, "Hey, we love what you do. You know, can you help us?" And, and it's I don't want to take up all the time here, but real quick story: when I first started podcasting, I reached out to some of the bigger podcasters. And I said, hey, you know, my name is Chris Gray. I'm, I'm starting this nerd empire. I, I could really use some advice. Not one person responded. Not even uh, nothing. I became friends with them on Facebook. They never responded to any of my posts. And I thought to myself, this is terrible. I know that they have big audiences, but it only takes a second to like somebody's post. And I try to communicate and do all the stuff that I can with my, my community as much as I absolutely can, as quickly as I can. Mm-hmm. But I reached out to them and I said, hey, you know, do you guys have any advice? Yada, yada, yada. And nobody ever got back to me, so oh. it, it was kind of disconcerting in the beginning. It was like, really, yeah, you guys are too big? Yeah. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I've, I've sort of done the same sort of thing. But, you know, I, I love Twitter. I, I use Twitter every day, and that's how I sort of get hold of people. Right. You know, we've had a lot of people on this show, and uh, which I really thought wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't want to come on, but they, you know, they have come on. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Now, so now Chris, 
I, mm-hmm. I had a quick question for you. Have you heard of, I'm going to mention two podcasts. Have you heard of Today in iOS? Yes. And, and the other one I wanted to mention is The Two Hosers. Uh, I've never heard of The Two Hosers, but I've listened to Today in iOS. It's, one of my top, it's on my top five. Yeah, okay. Oh, you did mention. Okay. Um, to check out The Two Hosers. They are funny. I'll definitely it's a, check now it's a, f- it's a photography podcast, so I don't know if you're into photography at all. But if you just hear the way they start their shows, <laughs> it's 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 pretty pretty wild. And and they show that two people, if they click right, you can really have a a cool show. So I think that's just worth checking out just just for that aspect of it. Oh, I'll definitely check it out. And and that's something that we've run into here at the at the Tenor T Studios is we've gone through a lot of different hosts. And you know, it's hard to find people that that have that real good back and forth and um luckily my business partner, I have two business partners right now, uh, Trisha Woods and my friend from the UK, he's my UK correspondent Peter Gilbert. Um they've been phenomenal. Uh, Trish has been with me since the very, very beginning. Uh, she put out six grand. I put in six grand. We bought a bunch of equipment, you know, website stuff, uh, you know, artwork, intros. I mean, we went crazy. And, uh, you know, we decided a long time ago that we were going all in. This, this is what we want to do with our lives. We want to, we really want to connect with people. And even if we don't make a dime, I feel so empowered in my life. I feel like I'm doing what I was meant to do. Well, you've got the voice for it. Were you in radio before? No, <laughs> uh, I've never been in radio. Um, we we've only been podcasting now for about a year and four months. Uh, yeah, give or take. Uh, I don't know. It's just I get in front of this microphone. When I was in high school, I used to like to be the class clown, entertain people. Um, I like to think I'm good with people. Uh, I love to listen and talk with people and learn everything anyone has to say. Mm. I just I'm really fascinated with how people think and and how people behave and um, I don't know it gives me such a great opportunity to meet and to influence such a large mass of people and when I when we started doing the podcast at first you know when your numbers are lower you, you're kind of like oh man what are we doing and then finally you know you have these breaks and you start to see the audience grow and people start to love your content and send you feedback and and they send you gifts it's 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 phenomenal or buy from your affiliate links or send you donations and it's like it just blew my mind and i thought to myself this this is my life this is fantastic i love this oh it is that's it, yeah. it sounds like you really found something that you like and and you're totally into it and and that's how to be successful. I mean, if if you if you really love what you're doing, it's not a job. Yeah, that's exactly right. I wake up in the morning before I go to my day job, which is I work with my family, which I can't stand. But I look forward to sitting in front of this microphone every single day. I mean, I do five shows a week that require at least two to three hours of prep work. Well, except oh. for the one the one podcast we do is just a movie review show. So even we watch the movie or I've seen it a hundred times because they're mostly nerd movies anyway. But the Game of Thrones podcast we do, that takes hours of research because if I mess up, even the slightest pronunciation of somebody's name in the episode or in the books, it's hate mail. <laughs> it's hate mail. Well, not hate mail, <laughs> but they, they send me corrections regularly. <laughs> right, <laughs> I'll put right. it to you that way. What sort of equipment do you have there, Steve, Steve that you use at the moment? Chris, sorry, I said Steve. Oh, oh. Um, yeah, I use a uh, Heil PR40. Yep, nice mic. And I have, I have it attached to a Heil uh, shock mount. Yep. Onto a uh, a road um, uh, arm, I use a 27 inch iMac, a 2013 fully loaded version for I do that for the videos and for the podcasting. Uh, over here, I use a Behringer um, X1204 USB mixer. Uh, over here on the for my Skype machine, I use a 17 inch Toshiba with an i7 process. It's way overkill for a Skype machine, <laughs> but I, I you know I'm a nerd. What can I tell you? And then I use, um, I have an iPad that I use also when I'm doing the podcasting, depending on what show it is. Cool. And uh, behind me, I have a 13 uh, inch MacBook Pro Retina. Um, I use that for different applications. And then, of course, I have the gaming computer, which I do. Uh, I do some streaming for video game streaming. Uh, I find that audio only has been my best. You know, venture. So I don't really mess with that as much, but I, I put a little bit of money into the streaming equipment. And I also keep an Audio Technica 2100 USB microphone, which was the very first microphone I started podcasting with. Which, in a lot of ways, if you ever want to check out my, uh, I did a, um, a comparison video on my tnrt.tv uh, channel 
the, the microphone sounds phenomenal, and I paid 50 bucks for it. it it's a great mic. All of, my, all of my podcasting hosts, minus my sister and my mother, they all use that microphone, the Audio-Technica. Um, my sister and my mom use Heil PR40s. Cool, good stuff, mate. Um, and uh, where do you um, send the podcast? Out to? What sort of websites do you put them up on? What, what? Ah, yeah. So oh, our main website uh, we use Square. Uh, we use Squarespace. Okay. Yep. Which has been phenomenal. We haven't been able to bring our site down. The only problem is it, it is easy to to manipulate, but it's not really podcaster friendly. So we've had to tweak code and customize some stuff and contact customer service, whatever. And for our media host, we use a company called Hipcast. Okay. And big shout out to Hipcast. We couldn't do our nerd empire without Hipcast. When we first started, we used a different company. I won't mention their name because they, they, do, they do a great job, but they weren't right for us. And it was like thir- it would have been $30 per podcast. Now, if I'm hosting six podcasts, there was no way I could have afforded that. With Hipcast, it's 20 bucks a month, and I get two gigabytes of, of, uh, of space, and I get a reoccurring one gig added every single month. I do six shows, and they average about uh, an hour to two hours long, depending on, you know, it, it really depends on, you know, the content. You know, the content rules our time. But I've, I've never had them send me a bill saying, oh, you've gone over, you've gone over. Uh, and I use, um, for my recording process, I use GarageBand. Nice GarageBand one. has been phenomenal. <clears throat> okay, what about Podomatic? Have you used Podomatic before? Do you know, do you know Pod- Podomatic? I've never used Podomatic, although I have talked to people um, in the past who have, and, and they seem to like it. Yeah, I use it every day. I use it on my podcast. It works fantastic. Well, your workflow, your workflow is important. I mean, the passion takes you so far, right? And the, and the passion of podcasting helps you on those days where, you know, you're lo- and, and, I, and I hope everyone listening out there realizes that podcasting is not easy. Uh, it's it not sounds a- easy. It sounds easy, right? We get in front of the microphones and we act all silly and crazy and we try to give you guys great content. But even today, we've done, I can't even tell you how many shows we've done in total uh, off the top of my head. But even today, I still get a little bit nervous right before I hit the record uh, on GarageBand. And then something snaps and, and you're fine. But um, if you don't have that good workflow, you, 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 it, it's more like work. You know, the passion takes you so far when you look at the numbers and you say, oh, man, you know, what's going on here? The numbers keep fluctuating up and down and up and down. But then when, but if you have a good workflow, like that stuff you can kind of push away with your passion. If the workflow is too difficult, it starts to wear on your passion. It's almost like you're going on a trip to the dentist. So I think the workflow is important for any podcaster out there. You really have to get a, a you, you know, at first it's going to be difficult, but if you, you you try to minimize the the length every single every single time I sit down, I try to think, okay, what can I do to make this a little bit easier, a little bit smoother, and not take away the the quality. You know, Chris, I I equate the workflow to an assembly line. Mm, and in, exactly. in, photo- in photography, it's the same thing. When I go out and I cover an event, I pretty much do the same things all the time. And I come back and I've, I've just got it down to a science to where I can just crank it out. Yep. And if you get the right gear and you know the right tripod, the right this, the right that, it just makes it so much more enjoyable. You don't have those hiccups and those, those problems. Yes. And if you can smooth those things out and just get it really flowing like an assembly line, then it works. Now, I have a question about the hosting on, on your podcast. Do you have to pay for that bandwidth? Like every time somebody downloads a, a podcast, is, does it oh, go yeah. ka-ching and you have to pay no. for that? No, it's not like Amazon. Uh, I think Amazon servers, they charge you per download, right? Or they charge you per upload, whatever it is, like a, a penny a download or an eighth of a penny or whatever it is. No, okay. that's just flat rate. That's just a flat rate. So let's just say, for example... If uh, 150,000 people downloaded one of my podcasts right now, today, mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. wouldn't charge me any different than they charge me. It's 20 bucks a month. Wow, and, that's great. Oh, and yeah. HipCast has been fantastic. We actually did an interview with Michael from HipCast, and you know, I can't speak highly enough about them. They actually, I, I had an interview with them on my T flagship show, and they were, he was so awesome. He listened to him after the podcast was over. He said, well, what can I help you guys? What can we change? And we, we you know, my partner, Trisha Woods and myself, uh, we, we told him, you know, can you make this a little bit easier and that a little bit easier? Done. Mm-hmm. He did it within, I think, three weeks. Uh, he coded it himself and he oh. contacted us on Twitter and he's like, it's done. I'm like, where do you, wow. <laughs> where do you get service like that? So, so wow. it's like called again, Chris? What's it called again? Hip? Uh, hipcast. Hipcast. Com. Okay. Is that just for video and audio, or is it just video? What? What can you? Um, they do. They do video. 
Um, okay. They do uh, they do video and audio, and you can even podcast from your smartphone if you wanted to. They used to have an app, but Apple was charging them, you know, that thirty percent. Uh, you know, you know how Apple does it. They charge a thirty. They want their thirty percent cut. But uh, you can actually call in on your phone, and I know it's not really good audio. You know, it's what sixteen kilobytes a second, so it sounds like crap. But if you're at a jam and you need to put that podcast out, you can call a phone number and you can record a call. Wow. Uh, right from your phone. Although you don't have to anymore. You can pick up an iPad, plug a US, plug the uh, if you have a Lightning or even a thirty pin uh, a USB adapter, plug one of these Audio Technicas into it. You know, fire up your uh, your voice recorder, and that's how I do. When I go out on the field, when I do um, conventions. I, I just either record on my iPhone. If I do video, I bring a tripod on a, on a Neato. Uh, I have this really neat uh, mount that holds my iPad, and I do video with the adapter right to the microphone, and it works brilliant. Damn, good stuff, mate. So it's a good bit of kit, yeah. It is, yeah, sounds good. Sounds have, good. have you used Boss Jock Studio? You know, I just downloaded it. Uh, I want to say it was right before I went on vacation, or maybe it was the week before. I, I have it. I haven't tried it yet. So I'm, I'm actually looking forward to giving that a try. Okay. I I played with it some. It's it's pretty awesome for somebody that wants to just be able to, you know, crank it out quick. You just put your Absolutely. little sound effects in there and all that, and and um, mm. it it uh, it's it's really pretty quick and easy to put together something that sounds pretty decent. Yeah, and and you know what? It's getting easier and easier to podcast. And I mean, I may sound like a little bit of an elitist, and I don't mean to. It's just that me personally, you know, I'm trying to build this empire. I'm trying to make this my living that pays. You know, pays for my mortgage and takes care of my wife and son, and of course, all the people that have helped me to grow this podcasting studio to where it is. I want to make sure I can pay for. You know, I want to be able to take care of them. But if, and I, like I said, I don't want to sound like an elitist. Uh, what I would, what I do want to say though is, if anyone out there has a passion to speak online, if you have something that you want to say, do it. Don't be afraid. There is somebody yeah. out there who will listen. Yeah, and I think a lot of them will. I mean, you you probably heard of. I think there's a book. Here comes everybody. Yeah, and I've heard of that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it it it's is. Happening. I mean, and and that's that's the. But that's kind of a double edged sword because what's happening is the audience is getting cut up all the time, and of course the radio stations and the networks and all the old media they're already feeling the pain. Uh, radio stations, I think, are down something like 13% in just the last three years in their listenership. And so, uh, but and, and, and my way of thinking is it's going to continue to get cut up. So you really have to be good. You really have to be on top yeah. of your game to, to stand up above all of those others. And, and I've told even Dan McDermott with the Google Plus Week, I, I told him the same thing. Yeah, somebody starts a show and they get 10, 12 viewers, right? That's that's nothing. That's not going to hurt anybody, right? But if there's a million of them out there that start a show and they each get 10 or 12 viewers, right? That's enough to hurt a lot of people that True. are used to having a lot of eyeballs or ears listening to their content, right? So Yeah. It, I think it. I think going forward, you're really going to have to be special, and you're really going to have to be organized and and have your act together. And it's going to be the thing where you know probably one tenth of one percent of the people are going to be making a lot of money, and then everybody else is going to be making like next to nothing. And so, to me, that's what makes it exciting. The challenge. Sure. That, that, uh, it, it is. Somebody yeah. told me. Somebody told me once a long time ago. That uh, well, not a long time ago when I first started the studio, that you know you're dreaming too big, it's not going to work. That is the worst thing you could say to me is that it's not going to work and it's not going to happen. I will, it will, my last dying breath, the last drop of my blood, I will do everything I can to prove that person wrong. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> yeah. absolutely, definitely. Okay, let's go to Steve now. Steve, you got any questions for Chris? Oh shoot, I think you already pretty much answered them all. Uh, all right. Your equipment wise, and uh, I th uh, think that's. Oh, how about so, what were some of the conventions you covered? You mentioned uh, something about that. Yeah, I've been to. Con I usually just stay local for now. Uh, hopefully, I plan on going to BlizzCon and stuff like that. As soon, you know, once I get a little bit more income to come in and I can afford to make this a full time job, I plan on going to any convention that is even slightly nerd related. But uh, the conventions I've been to so far is mostly Comic Con New York, and I go to uh, WizCon here, uh, WizardCon in uh, in uh, Philadelphia. Um, there's a couple of cons in New Jersey I haven't been to yet. Um, I go to a convention in Wildwood, New Jersey, 
Um, usually, uh, I went on my vacation to go meet some of the smaller guys uh, because they have fantastic stuff too. I want to try to, you know, I don't care whether they're really big. Uh, comic book sellers are small. If they're interesting, they have good personalities. If they're, you know, I, I, I want to try to get everybody involved in this nerd army, you know? All right. Can I stuff. say something? Go ahead, Jacob. Yep. Well, you, you're you mentioning WizardCon. There's a per, an old Power Ranger that would come out there, like the Jason David Frank, the old Green uh, the Ranger. Green, the Green Ranger, yeah. Have you met him? I have met him actually. He he was a really cool guy. I've met uh, him, Lou Ferrigno. Uh, let's see. Oh my God! I've met Matt Smith, um, uh, Gillian. I can't remember her first name. Uh, she plays uh, Amy, Pond Amy on Pond. Uh, on the Last Doctor Who. Uh, I met uh, the guy that plays Darth Maul. I'm sorry, I can't I can't remember his name. I, I, that's a shame because that guy was really awesome. I met Patrick Stewart. A lot of the times, I don't go and pay for the. Um, you have to go and pay for the picture and stuff. A lot of times, as I'm walking around, you'll just see him walk by, and you just say, "Hey, you know, hey, Matt Smith, or, or hey, whatever." And a lot of times, not going to say all the time, but a lot of times, they'll stop and say, "Hey, how you doing?" or quickly shake your hand. Um, I met some people from uh, Lost Girl. Uh, I, I've met so many people at these conventions; it's been phenomenal. I don't get starstruck because I look at everybody equally. We're all human beings. We're all alive, and and we all want to be important. Mm. So uh, I don't really get starstruck. It's nice to meet them, and, and I'm appreciative of their hard work on the screen or when they draw uh, and do, co especially artists that draw. My God, I wish I could draw comics or anything for that matter. I can't even draw stick figures. Mm -hmm. One but more. Go ahead, Jacob. I was just wanting to ask: Have you at Met any other the old, the old Rangers from the any of the o older series, or newer? No, I never, I never have. Although the uh, the Pink Ranger, uh, I forgot her name. Uh, beautiful woman, she was at uh, one of the Comic Cons. Uh, Jeff Johnson. Yeah, and I have I I didn't get a chance to see her. What about favorite TV shows, Chris? What what are you watching on TV at the moment, mate? Oh, yeah. um, one of my favorite shows is uh, the Game of Thrones. We do a Game of Thrones podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but <laughs> I love the show before we did the podcast. So uh, another good show that I like is Arrow because uh, I'm really big in DC Universe. Well, I, I'm probably not as big in DC Universe as I used to be, but I love I love the DC Universe. Um, I haven't watched. Let me see. What are the other other shows that I'm really into at the moment? Oh, I loved Breaking Bad. Oh yeah, yeah, Breaking um, Bad. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that was great. I'm getting into Black Sails. Uh, I'm starting to get into Vikings. I love Sherlock Holmes. That's one of my my big time favorites. Mm -hmm. I just wish they would put more of them out. I love that show. How about um, another Who? show um, is um, oh my god, I can't think of it. It's a fairy tale. Um, I can't think of the name time? of the show. I'm no. having a senior moment. Is what Are I'm you having. by cable cutter or do you still have cable at home? I still have cable at home, um, and I pay out the nose for it. I get <laughs> the reason I do. <laughs> Because I get the HBO package um, for the Game of Thrones. I don't like, even though I'm a nerd and a lot of nerds like to do things on, on, the, on, the, on the shady side, I don't like to do that. Uh, and I, I like to reward people. Sometimes it's overpriced, you know, I will agree. But I like to reward people for putting their time and effort into stuff. So I don't really promote pirating too much. Mm. Um, you know, as much as I hate paying Verizon, I have Verizon Fios, I get 75 download. 35 uploads, so I get my money's worth there. But everything else, I don't... I, I, it's actually cheaper if I buy the entire package than if I get just one. Right, which yeah. doesn't make any sense in the universe. It, it, it doesn't make sense to me. But uh, in order to, to get the stuff that I need right now, I can't... I, I, I'm, I'm right there at the edge. I want to cut the cord, but there's still stuff on the TV that I still yeah. need. Are you a TiVo user or do you have you used TiVo before? What's your view on TiVo? I've never used TiVo. Uh, I just use the uh, the DVR that comes with the cable box. Um, although everyone that I've talked to says that I should get a TiVo, that they're phenomenal. Oh, yeah, definitely. The TiVo's great. They do great stuff. But now with streaming, I mean, I use the Apple TV. I have five Apple TVs in the house. Damn. Wow. And, and yeah, well, the one Apple TV I have downstairs, and I'm going to brag a little bit here. I hope you guys don't mind. I have a 73-inch TV downstairs. Oh, nice. Hooked up to an amazing sound system. What's then the I had a son. Use? What's the brand? What's that? What's the what the brand? What's the brand you use for your amp and stuff in the home theater? Oh well, the home theater I'm using. Yeah, it's all it's Yamaha and I use Energy speakers. Oh yeah, nice. Yamaha's great. I think I paid around seven grand for the whole setup. Uh, the TV I'm using is is a little bit older. It's a rear projection DLP TV. It's a Mitsubishi. 
Um, cause they didn't have, uh, at the time I wanted 120 inch plasma, but when I tried to get that, to the, I'm like, Hey wife, 120 inch plasma across. Huh. No, that wasn't happening. When I told her at the time it was 20 grand. She's like, no, <laughs> that's not happening. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I wanted it so bad. Um, okay. Um, any else, Chris, you want to mention before we go, where can they get hold of you? And, uh, that sort of yeah, Sure. Uh, real quick, I want to thank everybody for having me on. You know, no you guys problem. have been phenomenal. I, I've been problem. looking forward to the show. Come back on any time uh, if we need a co-host. We'll oh, have... excellent. Excellent. Yeah, we'll talk about that after the show if you have time. But yeah, um, mention some of the shows I do. Uh, you know, you guys can check them out if you like. I I'm really proud of them. If you just check out, uh, you know, just download and listen to five seconds of it, I'll be happy. Just give it a try. Um, right now, my biggest show is my Game of Thrones podcast called Behind the Iron Throne. That is explicit, so you definitely don't want the, the kids to hear that one. Uh, my second biggest show, believe it or not, in, the, in a world full of uh, you know, noise, in, in gaming anyway, is my Teen Your Tea gaming show. Um, that's, that's near and dear to my heart as well. All my shows are. They're like my children. Uh, my next show is It's Apple Time. That's where we talk about all Apple products. Um, we try to give um, you know, different deals on apps and tips and tricks, and we talk about the news. Uh, there's my Teen Your Tea show, which is my flagship show where I kind of uh, bring everything together and everyone that's in my network can kind of join up and it's just a, almost a free for all, um, with, with, with limitations and rules. Uh, then we have nerd theater and that's where we basically break down movies that are in the nerd genre. Although I am thinking about trying some other movies and my sister does a great hockey podcast called the hockey hour with my mom. If you're into hockey, um, I'm not really into sports, but my sister loves sports and uh, her and my mom do a fantastic job. And, of course, you can check out all my unboxing videos and hopefully tutorial videos coming down the pipe nice. at, at my teenyort.tv. Um, I know I just mentioned a lot of stuff. If you want to find anything we're doing either in your podcast catcher or just on Google, just type in either teenyort.com or teenyort, and you'll find all my stuff. Good stuff, Chris. Good stuff, mate. Um, what sort of stuff have you unboxed so far? What's your favorite gadget or you know, that sort of thing? Um, well, I can, I can tell you, I just did a, a, P, uh, it's a company called PDP Afterglow Headphones, and they're, uh, they're wireless headphones for my gaming PC. Uh, they glow blue on the, on the outside middle. They're phenomenal. Wow. Uh, I, I love them to death. And um, uh, another thing that I've, uh, I've, I don't know, I've unboxed so many different things at this point. <laughs> um, I basically, I buy something I, I'm, before I can play with it. Like I bought a Wii U. A couple weeks before I went on vacation, and I, I had it in the box, and I'm like, "Oh, I want to play it. Oh, I want to play it." But I better do an unboxing video. I just spent three hundred dollars on the thing. Well, wow. I, I better open it, and you know, and I have a lot of fun doing that. So, it's just that <clears> it's <throat> like you know, when you're a kid and you get that new toy, and you're in the back seat, and you just want to open it. Oh my god, I want to open the toy. Oh my god, let me just open the toy. It's kind of like that. <laughs> Can you give any um, any tips on to Jacob about his unboxing video he did today? What, what's your view on that? Can you any? Yeah. Uh, okay. So here's some. Do uh, you have an iPad? Uh, Jacob. Of course, uh, that's what I was using to talk to Brad. Excellent. I, what I do is um, I'll, I'll set up my iPad where my camera will be, and there's even some brackets we can talk about at, after the show if you like, where you can sure. actually mount the iPad to your tripod, and you can even put bullet points. And I do this for my podcast as well. I put bullet points so I because I, I, it's very easy for me to get off the beaten trail. I mean, I think we all can kind of we all drift from time to time. So having those bullet points there of what you want to say, so you get across a clear message, so people uh, they can get the takeaway that you're trying to give them. Um, that's that's great. Um, another thing is look directly into the microphone when, or I'm sorry, into the camera, so that the audience feels like that you care about them, that you are you know talking to them. That that even though it's it's a video um, uh, paradigm, it's important to let people know that that you care about them, that, that they are important to you. That's why you do it in the first place, to build that connection, even though it is. So the internet, I, I still believe that to be true, trying to look at somebody in the eye. Um, another cool thing would be, um, you know, just take your time. Take your time and don't be afraid to edit. Yeah, definitely. I don't have any editing software. Oh, you definitely need a, you, need, you need an iMac, my friend, or a Mac. That's what I was trying to tell him. You need an, an Apple <laughs> computer. You can only do yeah. sort of stuff on, on Apple. You can't use Windows. Brad, you and I are, are of the same mind. Uh, I'm going to raise my drink to you, sir. Yeah. I'm Apple all the way. When it Definitely, comes to man. creating stuff, it, it just makes it so easy and smooth, and it looks sexy. Yeah, it does. It does indeed, mate. I'm, I would never go back to Windows. Jody, what's your view on all this, and where can they get hold of you? Um, I'm, first of all, thank you so much, Chris, and, and also Craig, for coming on the show today. Um, got a lot of great insights. 
love the blogging stuff, the podcast stuff. Um, very good stuff. Anyway, um, where can you find me? I am on Twitter as Sunswept. You can find me as Jody Rains, most of the typical places, or at my website, which is webmarkcom, found at webmarkcom.net. Good stuff, Jay. What's your, what's your view on this show? Have you enjoyed, your, enjoyed yourself today? I always enjoy myself, and I apologize for being quiet. I am still getting over this cold, and um, you guys can't hear me hacking because I've had it on mute, but... Um, <laughs> but it's been a great show, and I appreciate you guys for, for you know, carrying it and apologize for not pitching in more. No problem. No problem at all. No problem at all. You can get me on Twitter at Brad on Tech Webcast. Craig Ship, what's your view on this uh, show, and where can I get hold of you, mate? Hey, it's all good. I just subscribed to uh, It's Apple Time Sweet. on my, my app here. I've got the, the Casts app, C-A-S-T-S. Yep, and I just searched, and boom, it popped right up, and I subscribed, and um, got my settings so that it's going to auto download your podcast. It's going to keep the most recent so two, so I'll be able to keep up on that. I listen to a lot of podcasts because I walk about five or six miles a day, and I listen to the podcast while I'm walking. So you're now on my my top five as well to listen to. Thank you. And they That's can awesome. find me at they can find me at craigship.com, craigship.com. And ship has two Ps, but it works either way. You can put in craigship with one P.com. That'll work as well. And then you'll find links from there to all the various social media. I'm Craig Ship on Twitter as well. And uh, check it out. I, I do some product reviews and so forth, and I cover a lot of events and publish a bunch of photos. I reached a milestone. I hit uh, 40 million views on yeah. my Flickr photos and um, rapidly approaching 6 million views on my YouTube channel. So some people are starting to discover my things. And Audrey Schur, who I work with with Hooping Live, she hit 10,000 subscribers on her YouTube channel the other day. So we don't know. we're making some progress. Mm -hmm. Good stuff, Craig. Chip, good to have, have you on. Come back on any, any time. Absolutely. Always good to chat to you about stuff and uh, Android, which, which you don't like. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Craig, those are phenomenal numbers, just phenomenal. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, we're headed the right direction. So yep. Keep doing what you're doing, Craig. Uh, Jacob Jones. Well, you can follow me at jazzbot 326691 z And today was, I had a fun time talking to everybody. Good stuff, mate. And Steve? And you can find me at uh, on Twitter as chatterbox underscore live. And, of course, justin.tv forward slash let us cool dude. And, of course, you can always watch the Tech Webcast live video version. And, of course, on techwebcast.info as well. Good stuff. And who's on next week? Steve, you got the, and the guest? Yeah, let me check the calendar. And sometimes I don't always have it updated. But I think we got here we have Jason Schnell. That's it. Yep. Yep. He's been, he's on uh, the Tweet Network. Um, Intertext.com blog. I don't know if that's, that's it. Yep. yep. That's Good him. stuff. That's him. Yep. He'll be on next week. Jody will be on next week. Is that correct, Jody? You'll be on next week. Nope. Sorry. Yep. Yep. I, I keep muting it. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. I know. I, I apologize. Like I said, I. I am like hopefully. popping my head off here. Oh, good. Yeah, so, hopefully good. you'll be o over your cold. I hope so. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Thanks for being on, everyone. Appreciate your time. Yay. Yay, thanks. Tech webcast. The hosts and guests are unsurpassed. Uh, tech webcast. Because technology moves so fast. Tech webcast. Stick around and you're gonna have a blast. Yeah! Tech, 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 tech webcast. Ha, ha. Tech, 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 tech webcast. Big ups to Andrew, to Brad, Jody, Steve, and Jennifer!